Whoa, I really need to get my hair cut. Oh well. What is up YouTube? So I spent 170 euros to get my running performance tested. Was it worth it? Well, let's just have a look. So for the past eight years, I've been running. And at first, of course, I improved quite a bit. Um, I managed to run longer. My, my very first run was just 500 meters, was just around the block. I think I was 23 years old and I had fitness for shit. Over the past eight years, I've been running more and more, further and further, and I have been improving. Uh, but eventually, I think like in anything, if you just continue without actually changing anything, you do then start to stagnate and the improvement is very minor. So um, because of that, and I noticed I wasn't getting any faster, I wasn't I didn't really feel any fitter. I decided to spend 170 euros on getting my performance tested. What this basically was is a lab tested treadmill run. So they put me on the treadmill, put me on there for... I want to say 40 minutes with uh, different intervals and different speeds and I wanted to see uh, how my uh, how my blood changed and how my oxygen intake changed so they hooked me up with a mask they took blood from my earlobe uh, every couple of minutes and they just let me do my thing on the treadmill and I gotta say I'm really happy with the results of course it's not magic so it doesn't show how great and fit I am uh, but it does show how I can continue moving forward. For those that have been watching my channel for a little bit longer, I have been struggling with um, with my heart rate. So I've always been, I've been trying to run with a lower heart rate. Of course, you have the um, 220 minus your age to get to your max heart rate, or you have the 180 minus your age for the math heart rate. And I tried both. I tried everything and I really tried running at 150 or 100, uh, 149 is my math. I really tried running with that heart rate, but it was basically walking. I did math for like six months with no progress. So I decided to ditch that. I made a video so you can check that out if you guys want. Now that I received the results, I wanted to see what does this actually mean to my training? So they gave me two PDF files basically, one with uh, all the results, with a bunch of numbers and graphs that mean a lot and it actually took me a while to actually understand what it all meant but now that i do i think it's quite valuable and of course the second pdf of what that really means for me specifically what the, what should i do what should i focus on what are the parts that i can really improve on to progress in my training i'm now looking at my screen and i'll be sharing what i'm looking at or i'm sharing the graphs or the information that i'm looking at in the b-roll or somewhere on the screen so forgive me that i'm not looking you in the eye i'm basically looking at the screen where I have my notes. So first let's look at the performance test report. So this is all lab tested. And of course this was tested on a specific day. They told me to arrive fit and rested. So I didn't do any sports the day before. I didn't have any caffeine that day. And my last big meal was more than two hours ago. And then they basically set me up onto the treadmill. All the results here are based on me personally. So my age, my weight, my height. And of course, some things here are uh, considered high or low. But that really just depends on what you're looking at and what you actually want to gain out of this. So obviously the first is the VO2 max. I think most of you know, know this or at least have heard about it. It's the rate at which your body can consume oxygen because you need oxygen for your running. Here you can see that my VO2 max on this scale is high. Um, this is really just relative. It's, it's, com it's comparing me to other just hobby runners, not professionals. So 57 and a half might not might not be that high, but they consider it high for the average person who is just running for fun. Then the second is the VLA max. Honestly, before I did this test, I had never heard of this. No idea what it was, but it's the maximum rate at which my body produces lactate, which in turn also means the rate at which my body burns carbs compared to fat. Now, some of you may know, if you want to be a sprinter, then you need a high lactate rate. And if you want to be a long distance runner, then you want to have a low lactate rate. So this is pretty, pretty cool. Uh, it really shows that I'm on the low, low side of this, which is exactly what I want as a long distance runner. So that is definitely also something that, that's looking good for me. Then you have three that are relatively interesting. Um, I'm just really briefly going to go over them. So that uh, anaerobic threshold. This is the pace in meters per second um, at which I reach the anaerobic threshold. So once I pass this pace, meters per second, I'm basically building more lactate than I can burn, which is at 80% of my VO2 max. Then you have the fat max. This is the maximum amount of calories of fat that I can burn per hour. And then the carb max, uh, this is the pace at which I'm burning carbs and theoretically consume the same amount of carbs. Meaning, apparently the human body can only consume 90 grams of carbs per hour. 
and this would be the pace at which I, am, I would be burning it. So if I were to take 90 grams of carbs per hour and run at this pace, I could theoretically run continuously, but that's really just theoretical. Then you have a bunch of graphs. This graph basically shows the rate at which I'm taking in oxygen, as well as the oxygen that I'm demanding of myself. So the bottom axis shows the pace in meters per second. Once, I've, once I go faster than a certain pace, I am basically demanding more oxygen that I am taking in. This graph shows at which pace I can run where I'm burning more lactate than I am accumulating, and then eventually I reach a certain point and I'm just accumulating more lactate. And this graph I think is also quite interesting. It shows me the pace I'm running, what would be the optimal pace for me to run to be burning fat opposed to carbs. The green bar shows the fat max, the fat max zone, meaning if I'm staying in this pace, I will be primarily burning fat and I'll be at the highest rate at which I can actually burn fat while still being in my uh, aerobic zone. The red line basically shows the amount of carbs that I'll be burning at, uh, at each pace. And as you can see, at a certain point, the carbs will uh, surpass the amount of the, the fat that I'm burning. And that's not what I want to be doing when I'm running long distance. For long distance, you really want to be burning fat primarily as your fuel. Now, that's a lot of data and call and all, but what does it actually mean for me? So this information is all in German. I'm sorry about that, but I'll basically translate it. While I was on treadmill, they also measured my heart rate. I said earlier my math heart rate would have been 149. And according to Phil Maffetone, um, you should really be running under that uh, under that threshold to remain in your aerobic zone. Looking at this data, that's completely off, which I expected, but I was also kind of doubting myself. I thought I was just unfit, but that actually just means I have a high heart rate, which basically means I can ignore the math method. Uh, so the aerobic threshold is a heart rate of 162, which is approximately a pace of 630 minutes per kilometer. It's still a lot slower than I usually like to run, but when I was doing math, I was basically running at seven, eight minutes per kilometer. So seeing a six as the first digit already makes me makes me very happy. Then you have the anaerobic threshold, which is at 186, and that would be at uh, 453. So in theory, that would be a pace I could be that I would be able to run for an hour without burning out. And then you have the carb max with a heart rate of 171 and a pace of 549. And this is going back to the information I said earlier about the human body only being able to consume 90 grams of carbs per hour. So if I were to consume 90 carbs per hour and if my body can actually consume it, I would be able to run at 549 indefinitely as long as I'm taking in the carbs. And then they gave me seven zones and the guy told me to primarily focus on zone two and zone five. Zone one is basically just rest, regeneration. Then you have the base or the aerobic base zone which he advised to stay between 152 and 164. This equivalent would be running between 7 and 621 minutes per kilometer. And then zone 5 would be VO2 max training. So he really advised, because my uh, VLA max is relatively low and quite well established, he, uh, he would advise that my VO2 max should really increase. And the only way to do that is to really focus on the VO2 max. And he says to go sp uh, to do interval training, to do fart legs, making sure that I can get to these paces between two to 10 minutes. Well, honestly, I'm really having difficulty doing that. I really don't like sprints, but I have to do that. And it's really tough for me to get actually get to this heart rate for two minutes, but I have to try now. With all this, he definitely recommends the 80-20 approach. So 80% of my training should definitely be on the base and 20% of my, of my running should be focused on the VO2 max. For the past few weeks, I've been doing one interval run per week and the rest is all base training. And that's basically it. And as I said, I'm actually quite happy with this. It's not the best results in the world, but it definitely shows me that I that I have a high heart rate and that I can train with a higher heart rate. And I can basically ignore the whole math method. I'm really happy with this. Paying 170 euros was a lot of money. Would I do it again? Yes. I would definitely spend another 170 euros, maybe in three months, maybe in six months time to see how have I improved maybe before my race uh, next summer, I can do the test again, see have I improved to be more confident in my training, to actually know what I'm doing is the right thing and not to doubt myself just because I see the heart rate rise or, or my pace slowing down. And that was basically it. Do you have any questions about this data? And have you ever done a test like this? I can really recommend it. Let me know in the comments down below and see you guys next time. Bye.